Good evening, internet friends. It looks like pretty soon I'm going to have enough old serial terminals to choke a buzzard off a gut wagon. That thing doesn't work, but we'll fix it later. I think the high voltage section of the monitor is out. We'll, we'll fix that some other time. In the meantime, a lovely fellow on the Vintage Computer Forums sent me a copy of the technical service bulletins for the DT-1, and they do indeed explain all of those bodge wires that we were looking at in the previous video. Um, apparently, the bug is related to the address decoding for the printer port being too wide, and uh, something else with the video that was also fixed. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with that, but um, yeah, they, 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 they replaced the 8051 with one with a different ROM and uh, replaced that 373 with a 374 and uh, cut the trace. There's also another trace that's supposed to be cut that I didn't find, or maybe I did when we were trying to find that line from the CPU down to that uh, three input NAND gate that wouldn't ring out. Maybe that was cut somewhere and I couldn't, didn't, didn't see the cut somewhere. And um, they, we, they add in a 4.7K resistor there on the back side of the board and they also add a 2.2K resistor uh, to a place where there originally wasn't one installed. That would be R22. Uh, well, I'm not going to hunt it down right now. I'm sure you all don't want to wait for that. And then they added those four uh, bodge wires um, on the front. Now, uh, there is, however, nothing in the service bulletins about this jumper wire here that doesn't appear to do anything. Uh, maybe this trace is cut, and I just can't see it anywhere. I don't know, but that's all. That's got to be what that's for, right? So I'm not going to worry about it. It's not hurting anything on there. Um, so that 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 explains everything. Um, also, the the ROM uh, image that I dumped and posted to the Vintage Computer Forms is apparently corrupt. I tried dumping it again, and I got the same thing. So that makes me think that maybe. Maybe this the data on this ROM's maybe getting a little sketchy. Maybe that uh, sticker was off of there for too long and it got just enough light that it's kind of borderline or something. I don't know um, if UV EP ROMs work that way, but uh, that's my the only guess I've got. I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, I guess if it causes trouble down the road, I can I can burn another one. Apparently, somebody's already dumped the character ROM, um, and it's available on Bit Savers. And also, apparently, there's a DT1 emulator as part of Name. I didn't realize that. Very interesting. Um, however, uh, the CPU replacement um, there is a dump of the 8051 ROM on Bit Savers, but I don't know if it's from the replacement CPU that's got the new ROM code that. Um, supports this modification so my 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 programmer won't read 8051s uh, apparently there is a way to put the 8051 into some kind of test mode and it'll dump its rom over port one um i haven't read the details on that i was just kind of glancing over it earlier but um i may be able to like program an arduino or something to do that i don't know um I think I'll try it on a different 8051 because I don't want to accidentally smoke this one. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> so um, that's a project for down the road somewhere. With all that being said, I guess we have sussed everything out that requires sussing. And we are down to my least favorite part of fooling with old computers, which is cleaning the stupid thing. Uh, but. It is a necessary part of the process, I expect, so we should just do it. Oh, by the way, before we do this, um, I've been using some uh, harpsichord music that was recorded in the 1920s as background music when I speed up the video. And um, YouTube is full of 
bots and copyright scam bots and stuff like that. And the music's public domain, but um, due to the nature of public domain law, you can um, you can change one little thing and re-copyright it. Uh, so I guess they do this with these bots, and then they 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 change it just enough to be able to re-copyright it, but so it'll still trip the YouTube content detection algorithm, and then they run ads on your video, um, even though you're using public domain music. So, um, I would like to encourage all of you, if you enjoy watching my videos, to install an ad blocker. All of my videos should be completely ad-free, because I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing this to make internet friends like you. Um, so, install an ad blocker. Ad Adblock Plus works pretty good, and it's available for every major browser, I think. And um, make sure that you turn it on when you're watching my videos, because I don't want those uh, copyright scammers to uh, get a red scent from what we're doing, um, and I also um, don't want you to have to listen to nothing, because that would make the videos even more boring than they already are. So, let's, uh, let's clean this thing up and put it back together and see if it actually still works um, after all of my poking around. So, uh, you can see here on several places on this board, um, it's it's not like this on the component side. The component side's fine, but over here on the uh, on the foil side, um, you can see several places uh, where the foil is starting to crinkle up. Um, that is the foil. It's not just the uh, it's not just the solder mask. It's the it's the metal underneath. I'm ninety percent sure. So I'm not going to scrub this very hard. Um, but it is filthy, and we need to clean it up a little bit, so we'll do what we can without damaging it. Um, I hope it doesn't get any worse over time. Uh, why, why, why did it do that? Do you guys have any idea?
test. No smoke. There's a cursor. Okay. Okay, so I was reading in the manual last night. Uh, apparently we can get local echo by setting this full half duplex setting to one. And then we should be able to get local echo. Yes, okay, let's test all the keys. Okay, um, so let's try that escape capital V to run the self-test. Aha! Okay, it worked. So local echo had to be on for that to work. Well, everything seems to... No, everything is not working. Okay, so the power is on, but the light is not burning. Uh, that can only plug in one way, and it is plugged in the right way. I mean, I didn't miss a... P oh, there we go. Looky there. That wire came out. I'll have to re-solder that. I'll be back. So, uh, when I was cleaning this, this is the back of the keyboard. Um, and there's the thing we need to unsolder right there. Or clean the hole out and then re-solder the wire, I should say. Um, when I was cleaning this board, when I took the keyboard apart, um, I discovered that apparently this thing had a, uh, a, uh, flux bath when it was assembled and they didn't clean it off so it was really nasty. It's been a good while. You probably saw scrubbing on that thing to to get that stuff off of there. There's, there's still a little bit on there but it's not it's not as bad as it was. Anyway, let's uh, let's see if we can get that thing fixed. solder. I hate this I, I hate this lead free solder um, but if I'm going to be wasting it anyway I, it came with this soldering iron that's the only reason I've got it um, if I'm going to be uh, if I'm going to be wasting the solder anyway I guess it's good to use to add to these traces that we're going to suck with the solder sucker um, It'll take me a while to use all that up though, jeez. <sighs> thing is up to heat, isn't it? Yeah. That thing's pretty darn slick, I have to say. Beats the hell out of those hand pumps. I'm, this is the first one of these electric desoldering guns I've had, and I will never, never go back, even though the Chineseium that this is made out of is particularly shitty. I'll just be able to stick that up through there and solder it. Don't think we'll have to restrip it or anything. Yeah, I can, I can make that work, I believe. Stay up there, you dirty rascal. Alright, where's my good solder? I'm gonna have to get some more pretty soon. Running low. Running low. Alright. That is a big hole for a tiny wire. Put a little too much solder on, but that's all right. All right, that's in there good now. All right, smoke test number two. All right, it came on that time. That's a really old LED. It's very dim, but I guess that's fine. Uh, Maybe I'll replace it someday, but maybe I won't. Hmm. 
All right, I guess it's time to reassemble. Well, this thing looks a thousand times better than it did, and everything well, I haven't tested this actual serial port yet, but the keyboard seems to be working fine and the display seems to be working fine. Um, this enclosure is actually painted plastic, um, so it's got some scuffs that go through the paint in a few places here. Um, there's some on the sides here too. But, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's not bad for something this old. Um, I don't know if I'd ever be able to color match that and fix those spots or not. I'd probably just make it look worse. So I think we'll just leave it how it is. It's got uh, all along this edge, all of the paints rubbed off. It looks really terrible right here. But say la vie. Uh, next time um, we'll make a serial port adapter for this thing and talk about uh, why stuff that's pinned out for as data terminal equipment is so freaking annoying. Um, but we'll, 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 we'll fix that. Anyhow, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, see you next time.